All right, good morning. Come on in, let's go. All right. Good morning, sir. <clears throat> good morning, good morning, good morning. All right, let's go. Let's hear what the Lord is saying today. Oh, bless his name, I thank you. Good to see you this morning, Sandy. Love you. Y'all keep coming on in. Come on in. Come on in. All right, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, if you would, please, to expedite time, let's go right to, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to go to 1 John, the fourth chapter. That's where we left off in our last session. 1 John, the fourth chapter, the first verse. Let's go there. Good morning to everyone. Good to see you. I know it's early, but I wanted to get this in and share it with you today because this evening I have to preach again. So I'm going to need some time in between to get some rest. All right, let's look at what it's saying here. Let's look at what it's saying here. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try. Remember, we talked about this. Try Prove, test, examine, investigate, and interrogate. Investigate and interrogate these spirits, whether they are of God. Spirits have to be tested. What spirit people of are of or operating in or the administration of a particular spirit in order to know the validity of that spirit and how that spirit is at work, it must be tested. It must be proven. It must be investigated. There must be an interrogation of that spirit <clears throat> in order for us to know exactly what it is, again, how I'm saying it, operating and administrating. Now, once the spirit is tried, we have to know whether it is of God. Why? Because many, pulas, remember that? Many shall be offended. Many shall betray. Many shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall arise. Matthew 24, 10 and 11. All right? So the issue here is the, the, the father, the apostle is saying to them, these spirits 
have to be tested, proven, examined, inter interrogated, and investigated often. Why? Because that's what many is. Many, much, more, the most, often. These are things that we have to see or we're going to see often. It's not sometimes. This is something that is often. Are you listening to me? All right. Make sure that you're tuning in to what I'm saying, because I'm going to make a turn here so you can understand what's happening. Why? Because many, many, many pulas, many, much more often is our false prophets going are going out into the world. So there were people who were in this Christian community. They were solid in the faith, solid in their doctrine, and then all of a sudden, something came in and changed the continuity of their mind and the continuum of their spirit. Now, let's look at this real quick. I want you to look at this so we can go back in the notes, and I want you to see this. I want you to go to 1 John 2.18. I'm going to put these on the screen for you. Write them down. 1 John 2.18. 1 John 2.22. 1 John 4.3. 1 John 5 and 10. Now, what all of these verses lead to, it speaks of the attributes or the characteristics of these false prophets or what a false prophet is. Number one, they're a liar, okay? They're liars, which means they're deceivers, right? We talked about this before, delusionists, right? And then we also dealt with the aspect of them being antichrist, antichrist. They are antichrist. First John 2.18 says this, little children is the last time and as you have heard, the, that the Antichrist shall come, the person in the book of Daniel chapter 7 that shall be revealed. You're going to see him. You're going to see him, the Antichrist. You haven't seen him yet. Although he is present somewhere in the world, you have not seen him yet. Watch this. Now, he says there are Antichrists to come even now. Are there many? I want you to keep watching this throughout this study. There's a correlation of thought here. Many, many, much more and often. So once you've tested two spirits, you put your guard down. There's another one that's coming trying to get by on you. So you have to constantly stay on this guard because this is going to be something that is going to happen often. It's going to manifest often. This is something that's, it's a continuum, all right? Now listen to this. It says in verse 19, they went out from us. Watch that. They went out from us. Where did the false prophets start? They became false prophets in the Christian community. They infiltrate by becoming a part of, or hear me, being selected by God. That's a key word, selected by God for them to work their terroristic uh, uh, ways within that community to see what is really in the community. So the community cannot be tested unless a terrorist is in the community who is permitted, good God, to infiltrate, be a part. So it's not like it's unaware. It's there. You know it's there. You refuse to accept it. You refuse to accept the identity of certain spirits that are in people that are not of God. These are false prophets. They are liars. They are antichrist. They are against the characteristics, the nature 
of Jesus Christ, of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we need to understand and grasp this because I want to focus this in a minute into one particular person. Now notice how it says they went out from us. And then for, uh, 1 John 4 and 1 says, you got to test these spirits because the false prophets have left the community. They have left the community. You see that. They have left the community. It's important for you to understand that. They have left the community. 4 and 3 says, 1 John 4 and 3, and every spirit that confesseth not Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist. You see it? It's the spirit of an Antichrist, whereof you have heard that it should come. We've already been saying this for years. It is. It should not be unaware to you or new to you to understand how witchcraft is operating in America and around the world, in the church. It is the dominating spirit that operates in the church. Get past the gifts, get past the charisma, get past the anointing, get past all of these things that you see with these people, get, get past their brilliant words, their, their great dialect, and their, their beautiful eloquence, get past that, their, their seminary and schooling, get past that and see this for what it truly is. It has been allowed to come. If God didn't want it there, he would have moved it a long time ago. He has permitted it to come. He permitted this plague to come to reveal to everyone who everybody is. Let everybody can see everybody. They're, they're, listen, there are no blinders. Everybody can see everybody for who they are. You can see the objectives. You can see the motives. You can see the plans. You can see the goals of the enemy as well as that of God. All right? Now, what we're seeing here, what I want to bring out is what you're seeing is this invasion, this infiltration. These are what Paul says in Acts 20. They are considered wolves that would be uh, infiltrate from the outside coming in. And then some of them within the community would grow up. There's some people who start in God right, they're, they're listening, they're, they're, they've got the, the nature of Jesus Christ is being formed in them in the word, and then somehow or another, a spirit grips them of error, a spirit of error, a spirit of disrespect and error comes on them, and what happens? They become something else. Their language never changes. The dialect of the kingdom Never changes. Have you ever have you ever listened to people today? Everybody's talking kingdom, but we don't see the kingdom coming because when the kingdom is really coming, it's violent. It's violent. There's a violent fight when it comes to the kingdom. So we don't see that the kingdom suffers violence and the violent what take it by force. So then if the kingdom was really activated like we should see it. We will see altars full of repentance. We don't see that. We see altars with people who are transfer members. The average pastor will tell you their church has not grown numerically. It has only grown in numbers in the sense of people who are transferring mad with somewhere else, from somewhere else, coming over here, bringing what they got from over there, Come, this one coming over here, that one coming over here, then they'll stay there for a year or two, get mad when something, whatever it is that makes them mad or offended, let's use that word, offended, then they'll leave with that offense and go to somewhere else until they can get their way. That is the false prophet. That is the false prophet. That's idolatry. Idolatry is not about how much you love your pastor. Idolatry is not about how much you respect the man. Let's get it straight. Do your studying right. 
Idolatry is when you have such a respect for yourself and what you're hearing. And when you're hearing in your own head, your own thoughts about who you are, till you never weigh it by the word of God. It's not weighed by the word of God. Then it becomes idolatrous because it's something you created. Don't get mad at the person. You get mad with yourself. You created that. You created it. You have to be responsible for that. You created that idol. And so the real nature of a false prophet is to lead you away from God and to take you to other idols and gods and lords for worship. So what the devil is doing, as I've shared with some of my ardent workers, what the devil is doing is now he's saying, okay, go ahead and burn your sage. You know what I mean? Now burning sage is not a problem. Let's make that very clear. And I said it. Burning sage is not a problem. Just like burning a blunt is not a problem. It's when you smoke the blunt that things, <laughs> that, that things can happen with you. We can get into that another time. It's when you burn the sage, what is the purpose behind what you're, do what you're doing with it? When you burn the sage to cast out spirits or to remove evil from a particular place, and that's your goal. That is what you're manifesting is to remove spirits or demons or devils from your particular space and you're burning sage to do it. That is not of God. That's witchcraft. Burning sage is not a problem. It's not. Burning sage is not. Doing a yoga pose is not a problem. It's when you're doing a certain element of worship and yum, yay, yeah, yum, yay, yeah, and you're beginning to chant and you're going along with those things and you're breathing and you're taking in those kind of spirits. Okay, now we talk about kundalini. That's a whole nother message, all right? If you're not worshiping and you're just stretching, that's not a problem. You can do the cobra stretch to stretch your back. It's a very good stretch for your back. But you're not doing it in a group of people who believe in a certain level of worship with that. Okay? So we got to get, let's get this cleared up. There's a lot of ignorance in the body of Christ. So, but when you're burning sage, right? And you're using it, come on here. To, to, I got to cast these devils in. I mean, I can sense some evil around here and I'm going to burn some sage. No, I'll just work, walk through there, put some anointing oil, oil on the doorposts of your children's rooms and pray over your house in Jesus name and let the blood cover it and let the blood of Jesus cover it. Pray in his name. You don't need no sage. Now, if you just want to burn it, you want to burn it, then you burn it. It's no different than burning that and somebody else burning tobacco. The tobacco is not going to hurt you as long as you ain't smoking it or you're not taking it in. The weed is not going to bother you. You will not have the effect of it until you take it in. The sage will not affect you unless you go in with the purpose of this is to remove certain demons. We don't remove demons like that. We don't remove demons with sage. We don't remove them with uh, uh, corn beans. We don't remove them with apples. We don't have to use oranges to remove demons. All right? That's witchcraft. Well, all we're going to do is cast them out in Jesus' name. We remove them with prayer, and we don't give them any territory or jurisdiction. Once we, come, once we solidify that, uh, that jurisdiction, that region, that, that particular area with the solidarity of Jesus Christ's name, then that's it, okay? That's it, then it's done. Let's, let's, let's deal with that so that we're clear of that because I'm dealing with a mixture, a conglomerate of people that are coming from various uh, different backgrounds, all right? So it's important for us to understand that. He says they're liars, they're false prophets. Look how he talks about it. Liars, false prophets, deceivers. Antichrist, they're against the nature of Christ. I don't care how much you don't agree with it. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as, as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. He became, the word became flesh. They didn't agree with that. They didn't, it's no way that, could, yes, he did. The son is co-equal and aligned with the father. They are one. 
I and the Father are one. The Antichrist comes and divides it and says, hey, look, take your sage, pray in your house with your sage, get your mat out and do all of these stretches and poses and pray to demons and ask these ask these demons to cover the, or clean out the evil that is in a demon cat. Demons don't cast out devils. Demons, devils don't cast out demons. Demons are lower rank. Devils are the next rank. Okay, so now the devils, they don't ca they would never cast them out. Replace them, yes. Cast them out, no. So there's no way that you can cast out, come on here, a devil or a demon with a devil or a demon. That, that's, you can't do that. That's why when you look at ancient churches, do a research and look at the outside of churches that are in Europe and some of the other areas of Europe, uh, Germany, places. And you'll look and you'll see these look like um, sometimes birds and different figured, uh, hideous looking figures that have wings. They're called gargoyles. They put them on the outside of the church. And this is why they will put them there. They will put them on the outside of the church, use the gargoyles to protect what was inside the church. The evil that was already taking place inside of the church. So you use evil to protect evil. Lord have mercy. Do your research. Evil protects evil. Evil will never cast out evil. They was casting out devils, but the person casting devils out don't have a clean life. Mm -mm. That's not legitimate expulsion of demonic powers. That's that's not legitimate. That's an illegitimate casting out of that. That's that's not uh-uh. Uh-uh. Demons, demons will never move for a person that's unclean unless they're doing it for attention or for showmanship and entertainment. They will come out of the person and then go right back in them when they go to sit down. I've seen it many times. Demons be cast right out. Person go back to their seat and the demon comes right back home. So what we're dealing with now, watch this. I'm going to deal with this aspect of they went out from us. The issue is they went out from us. The false prophets have gone into the world and they have a spirit of error that they developed within the community. See, they sat long enough. Listen, watch this. They sat long enough to hear what we said, to hear what we renounced and denounced, what is not pleasing to God, what would make God happy. They sat and they listened to that long enough they didn't believe it. They weren't concerned about it. And they left splitting the doctrine. And so if you want to worship a demon and worship Jesus, what's wrong with that? The old legalist said, it's not, in Galatia, they said, hey, listen, there's nothing wrong with you guys getting saved. We want you to get saved. But where Paul got it wrong is, you know, you got to be saved and circumcised. So now you got to get cut. You got to be saved and circumcised. You got to be saved and you have to do all the other laws or legal aspects of the law in order to be received by God. No, there's only one way, one way to God. That's through the, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? All right. I've got about 20 minutes. Now I'm going to get ready to head this home. Now what I want you to do is look at this word. I'm going to have you put this word on the screen. This word is, is, is departure. Put that on the screen. Departure. And departure is defined by the Greek word E-X-E-R-C-H-O-M-A-I. E-X-E-R-X-E-R-C-H-O-M-A-I. O M comb exercomb A I I exercomb I exercomb I. You hear me? Departure exercomb I E X E R C H O M 
I-A, exocomai. Now, what that word means, it means to literally walk out of the building, leaving out of a place or the place that which one eventually leaves from or goes from. It means to go or to come forth of. Now, why am I using that? Because that very word, let's look at St. John 13. St. John 13, that very word is the same word that is used about our friend Judas. I'm going somewhere. Judas. 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 St. John 13 and 1. That's right. To walk out of the building. To go or come forth of. That's correct. There you go. You got it. Leaving out of a place. Depart. Leaving out of a place or the place out of which someone leaves or goes. Okay? No holler in the deck. You got to hear this and get this deep down in your belly because we have been bewitched too long. This is the things that I'm seeing is ridiculous. Now look at it, look at 13 and 1. Now before the feast of the Passover when Jesus knew that his hour was coming, all right? Jesus is feeling a certain element of pressure. He knows that the hour is coming. What's the hour? The hour of death. He knows that the hour is coming and he feels this pressure. This is what he says. He said, watch this. The hour was coming that he should depart out of the world. He should leave. Watch this. He's going to leave out of the world to go or come forth of leaving out of the place or the place out of which he will leave, there will be a departure for him. Jesus knows his time of departure out of the world unto the father, having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them to the end. He loved them till until the end. And watch this. He loved them until the end. All right. Now, let's go to, um, I want to go to over to uh, verse 2, 13 and 2. And supper being ended, the devil, the devil, the adversary, the devil now put into the heart of Jesus. Judas, after the supper, the devil now, now, the devil now, having put into the heart of Jesus, Judas, Simon's son, to betray him. In order to betray him, watch this, he had to be offended. He had to be offended. He had to be offended. He saw now the devil put it in his heart to betray Jesus. That wasn't Judas. That wasn't, that wasn't what he wanted to do. But the devil put it in his heart. Jesus, have mercy. The devil... The, the, the devil, when you play with your thoughts and your consciousness and your mind and you're in and you're out and you're in and you're out and you're going back and you're going forth and you never stabilize your life, eventually somewhere along, along the line, you're going to get overtaken with your instability and a double-minded man or woman is unstable in all of their ways. That same word, listen to this, 1326, Jesus answered and said, it is, it is, he it is to whom I shall give 
a sop when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it unto Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. And after the sop, Satan entered in him. He had a chance to get free. Satan entered into his heart and put it in his mind to betray Christ. But it wasn't right. It, it, it wasn't, he wasn't finished yet. But the longer he went with the supper, instead of renouncing what was in his mind and what was in his thoughts, he had already departed. So there's two departures going on here. Jesus feels, Lord, help me here today. Help me here today. The anxiety, the fear of departing from the world and going to the Father. And the anxiety was leaving these guys by themselves. Are they ready? But Judas doesn't even know it. And the devil like he's operating in the church of Asia Minor through John years later, the false prophets are leaving or departing. They are not of us. They're going and they're departing. With what? With error. They're with a, a new message, new, new language, new linguistics, new communication that's negative or opposing the truth. Do you hear that? You see, when people, listen, when people get, and I got to finish this, when people get or allow the devil to put things in their mind, it's a matter of time before they will defect the faith and move into their own understanding, thinking it's their own understanding, when really it's the devil. So this whole plot to destroy Jesus wasn't something that he had from the beginning. It took three years for Satan to get him ready, for Satan to prepare him for his departure because Satan was going to use Judas as the tool, watch this, Lord have mercy, help me, to betray Jesus Christ and to cause him to be murdered on the cross. But I got something that's deeper than that. I got something that's deeper than that. The devil wanted to betray Jesus. The devil thought, he literally thought he could destroy the Lord. He thought that he was as great as Jesus because Ezekiel 28 says that he was created with pipes and timbrels and, and, and horns and things inside of him as a worshiper. He felt that he was untouchable. He says in Isaiah 14, I will ascend to the most, to the high, to, to, to the, to, to the uh, sides of the mountain in the congregation of the north. I will go there. I'm going to make me a kingdom in the north. I'm going to do all these things. The five I wills. I will be like the most high. I will do what he did. I will. I will. I will. He believes of his own volition. Now, here's the thing you got to see. If Satan says, I'm greater than God, and he was created by the Almighty for him to glorify him, ever so much to glorify him until the word hallelujah was not even a word of praise until hallelucifer. Hallelucifer. They put Lou in there to show he was created as a worshiper. A worshiper for who? For God. To cover God with praise. He believes now. He really believes he's greater than the Almighty. He believes that. And so what he does is he always looks for weak. Listen, 
He always looks for, he ain't looking for gifted people. He ain't worried about no gifted people. He's not worried about no singers. He ain't even worried about your anointing. He ain't worried about no anointing. He ain't worried about, no, he ain't worried about your anointing, a gift. He's not worried about your talent. He's not worried about uh, 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 what you have to offer to the body of Christ and all these kinds of things. Mm -mm. He's looking at you to see who can take his sifting and remain strong. Who can be shaken often enough and not turn their back on God? Who can take Satan? Peter wants to sift you as wheat. But I pray for you that you will not be weak and that you will not succumb. And when you get converted, go and convert your brothers. Lord, help me here. Ah, Peter denied him and repented. Watch this. But Judas was so overtaken, overwhelmed, overcome with satanic thinking till even he knew <clears throat> When he ate of the sup, he was going to betray him. Look at what it says. He knew that he was going to do it. And verse 27 said, and after the sup, Satan entered in Judas, then said Jesus unto him, that thou doest, do quickly. In other words, go to the religious Sanhedrin, go tell them where I am. Go tell, Lord, help me, help me, help me. Go tell them where I am. Go tell them what I'm doing. Go tell them where I'm going to be. Go ahead. Because I know Satan has already entered you. He has you. He's got your mind. He's got your heart. He's got your will. You're the one. You're the one. You're the assassin that's setting me up for murder. You're the one that's behind it. And so Judas acted out everything as Satan would because Judas became a devil. But wait a minute. St. John, let's go to St. John 6. Wait a minute. But wait a minute. Where's my scholars at? But St. John 6 says this. St. John 6 and verse 70. St. John, the gospel of St. John 6, verse 70. Listen to what it says. Jesus answered them, have I not chosen you 12 and one of you is a devil? In other words, he knew when he authenticated him as an apostle, he was an apostle with a calling, with an election, with a gifting. He was an apostle who was called that had an assignment. But his assignment was to eventually be a false apostle to bring Jesus to his death. He was raised up amongst them. He was raised in the community as a disciple to kill his leader. Jesus have mercy. Come on now. Hmm? He was raised he was raised. He was raised up by God to kill him. He knew he was a devil then. He had demonic, watch this, he had devilish or demonic potential. Good God. Can't come on here. Demonic potential from the time that he called him. He knew he was. And the thing that opened him up more than Peter, more than Thaddeus, more than James, John, more than the rest of the guys, you know what it was? He was weak to the voice of evil. Judas was raised as an assassin. Those are the kind of people he came from. Judas Iscariot, that's what Iscariot means. 
He came from a clan of people who were assassins. So what Jesus did, Jesus raised, Jesus raised him up. He didn't go get somebody that didn't know how to kill anybody. He went and hired, Lord have mercy, help me here, God. He hired an assassin to make sure that in three and a half years, he would lie on him, betray him, become offended, betray him, hate him. Come on here. Rise as a false prophet among the ranks and then go to the Sanhedrin, which is a religious system. This was not political. This was a religious system. The Sanhedrin was the original 70 elders that God told Moses, bring to the temple in the book of Numbers, bring them to the temple and I'm going to take of your spirit and put it on these 70. That's the origin of the Sanhedrin court. It changed after the 400 solid years to the Pharisees, Sadducees, the aristocratic people who were higher than the other people. They were no longer prophetic. They were no longer seeking the face of God. They were seeking their own will. They were putting yokes around people's necks and telling them live a certain way, but they couldn't live it themselves like preachers do today. They tell you what to do. They tell you how your marriage should look. Mm -hmm. Well, then some of them are saying, don't even worry about the sin no more. We're hearing that now. Don't worry about the sin. The issue is not the sin. The issue is, do you love God? No, the issue is sin. Because the problem with us, you, me, and all of us, that we're up at eight o'clock in the morning listening to this brown man talk is because we got a problem with sin. We're trying to get out of it. We're working our best to control it and deal with it. And we know the origin of it, but we're warring with it every day. We're warring with it within our flesh, without in the world system and above us with demonic pressure and principalities. Come on and talk to me this morning. Come on and talk to me this morning. Say I understand or something here. Mm -hmm. Just like teaching, because I'm going to pick the rest of this up. I got, I got 15 minutes, for real. I'm going to pick the rest of this up, up tonight. You got to, you just, those of you that can get there tonight, get there tonight. Get there tonight, because I'm, I'm going to finish this up. He was hired. Jesus Christ, God, hired the, I can't even get into it all. Lord have mercy. The Godhead, they hired an assassin to kill the son who is the representative of the Godhead in bodily form. We have to have a plan. Now we'll get this guy, but from the beginning, we know we already saw him. We already created him to be what he's going to be already God knowing what? His choice. He's an assassin. But what he didn't know as an assassin, when he killed the Lord and when he sold him like that to the Sanhedrin, what he didn't realize, that was all a part of the plan. That's why it took place in Gethsemane. Gethsemane represents, Lord have mercy, it represented the atmosphere of the church. It is the oil press. Pressure, weight, could God help me? I don't, I don't want to go preaching now. Pressure, weight, pain, difficulty, despondency, the thought of death, which he's never experienced. He's only known eternity and he needed a body to be born through the womb of a woman. That was a law, Genesis 3.15. The only entry into the world now is through the womb of a woman. And the child that comes through the womb of a woman, Lord have mercy, is going to have to do warfare. There will be a hostile environment, a rancor between two kingdoms, the kingdom of Satan and the kingdom that the woman is birthing children into. 
And he says that in that kingdom, he said, Satan, you will bruise his heel, but he will bruise your head. I, I could stop right there. Maybe I should stop right there because all I want to do is stop right there and tell you, for those of you who have felt like you are the underdog, for those of you who have felt like nothing seems to work, I don't care how many times I've tried it. I don't care how many times I've put it together. I don't care how many times I wrote it on paper. It just will not come together. I'm telling you that you are now entering into a season and a time of eight days of completion. What I need you to do is conform to the predestined, predetermined will of God, that God has already mapped out everything that's happened to you, that God has already assigned people to say what they have said, that God has already assigned people to do the things that they have done to you. God has already assigned certain people within your family to create lies about you. God has already assigned those in your failure, in your fall, in your hurt on this side of the cross, ladies and gentlemen. God has already assigned those people to betray you and hurt you that you trusted with your own self, your fall, your failure, where you came short. He knew everything before it happened. He has a foreknowledge of everything about you that nothing has come to you that he is not aware of. Mm, mm, mm. Lord, help me here, Jesus. Help me here. Give me the strength. Lord have mercy. See, he already knew that, uh, oh, come out, te ha, so called Rabbi Monday. See, they had already within the Godhead said and communicated. Listen, mm -hmm. we, we need to get together, watch this, and we need to hire a witch. Lord ain't saying nothing. Lord, this is blessing me now. Watch it. Watch it. Come on now. We, 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 we need to get together and hire someone who will be in the ranks of these men that you choose when you get to earth who are eventually going to be apostles. He said, we got to hire somebody. We, we, we've got to literally hire. We have to hire Satan, mm, Lord have mercy, to get a hire, hire someone on his staff, Judas, to assassinate you, son, when we prepare you a body and send you to the earth room and you come in the volume of the book, there we need an enemy. Mm, we need an undercover, Lord have mercy, captain. We need an undercover uh, 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 assassin to infiltrate, but put him within your ranks and make him an apostle. Make him one of you. Yet knowing he will be the one that has to be offended because he's weak, betray because he's weak, hate because he's weak, Lord have mercy. Be a false prophet because he's, be an antichrist because he, because he's weak. Be a liar because he's weak. Not stand for the things that make a man a man. Not stand for the things that make a woman a woman. But I'm so busy wanting to be in the ranks, but show within the ranks that the ranks ain't doing nothing. So I'm going to show my weakness. I'm going to show my failure. Lord have mercy. And I'm going to kill this man. My God have mercy. Woo! My God. That's why it wasn't far for him to go. It had been secret meetings. I believe that the scriptures don't talk about, in my opinion. The Bible says in St. John 20, there are many things that were written that could not be contained. You couldn't contain it. I, I believe that. I believe I've got 10 minutes. I've got 10 minutes. I believe that it was already known that this man would betray him. He knew who he was. Not only that, but in St. John 12, he was a thief. The Bible says he was a thief. 
He was a thief. He held the bag. He was the treasure. But Jesus knew he was a thief because he was weak. He thought with everything you're getting by. Oh, you think you're getting by. You think you're riding high. Come on here. No, no, no. Don't be deceived, ladies and gentlemen, in my clothes. I came to tell you that people are departing from the faith every day. Now the Spirit speaks expressly, 1 Timothy 4 and 1. The Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times, some shall depart. Come on here. Exercumia, exercumia, they will exercumia, they will depart from what they have known to be of the faith. And when they leave, people will say, Chris Godbo, I don't believe they left. Oh, they were in the ranks. They were always around Jesus. They were around the fire with him. How could they leave? They were planted for a certain amount of time. And when their season was up, they had to do what they were committed to do. Lord have mercy. So whether some leave or whether some stay or whether you lost friends or whether you lost associates, you don't have to worry about it. It's already in the plan. It had to be the way that it is. Come on here. They had to depart. It had to go the way it is. Come on here. And everything is not a physical departing because some people have physically, some people uh, 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 have, have mentally and spiritually left you a long time ago. The only thing that's sitting there is a chair. They sitting in the chair physically, but they mentally all left. They, they physically left. They're no longer committed because they were, they don't even understand it. You were hired to do what you did. And guess what happened? It backfired. Lord, have mercy. I feel like praising them right there. Lord, have mercy. Let me see if I can get some praise music on here. That, it, it backfired. that wasn't even in my notes. It backfired. Lord, have mercy. It backfired. It backfired. What the enemy planned as a setup, it backfired. It backfired. It backfired. Come on, somebody. It backfired. It backfired. It backfired. It backfired. Come on, somebody. It backfired. What was planned, Lord have mercy. They thought, they thought that they were taking him out. Lord have mercy. I feel a praise in here. They thought that they were taking him out. They thought that they were killing him. But what they didn't realize, he who was feeling the pain in his humanity had planned it all out before he ever had a body. He already planned it out. There are people who have been planned even in your family. They have been planned to do. It was planned, <coughs> predetermined, predestined from in eternity that they would do what they did. I need you now not to focus on what was done. I need you to focus on where you're going. Yes, it is going to be a painful week this week. This week will be a week you're going to have to think. You're going to have to lift your mind above the atmospheric pressure of the terror of the teraphim of the uh, troposphere. You got to get above the stratosphere where warfare takes place. Mm. You're going to have to get above the ionosphere. Come on here. You're going to have to get up and move. Come on here. Above the equator. You're going to have to move out of the earth's realm into a place where you can praise him there. Your spirit, your flesh is going to hurt because you're about to endure your Gethsemane. Good God Almighty, mighty, mighty. God, mighty God. <coughs> You're about to endure that. But I came to tell you and let you know this morning. The same way that the false prophets, the Antichrist and the liars John is speaking of have left out when they left out. The same way, good God Almighty, 
today. There are certain levels of evil, good God, that have manifested mm, that are going to walk away from you because the time is up now. The season is up. It is not for you to carry it any longer. It is no longer to tarry with it any longer. Your ability now in you says, I consent to my death. Mm, mm, mm. I consent to my dying. Yes, I have, as Paul said, the sentence of death within me. I know there'll probably be no return unless God can raise the dead. Lord, have mercy. Help me here. Help me. Help me. Uh, uh, there, there, there's no way out of where I am. I can't even trust my own self because I'm somewhere between neurosis and a psychotic break. Lord, have mercy. The, the, the pressure, the pressure, the pressure is crushing against my mind. Mm -hmm. the, the, the pressure is confronting, whoo, God, the pain in my life. Uh, uh, and I, I, I want to war back. I, I want to call for legions of angels and bring it to an end. Mm -mm. I'm too big for that. Mm -mm. I'm too powerful for that. He said, what I'm going to do mm -hmm, is endure it like a good soldier. I'm going to hang in here. I'm going to go through this garden. I'm going to go through this pressure. I'm going to allow the oil in me to be crushed until it leaks out of me, even though my help is insecure, even though my help has been hoarded, even though my help is asleep. Help me here. Help me. Come on now. The, even though my help is depressed, even though my help is disappointed, and that they can't carry me. Ah, this week, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that you're going to have to carry this on your own. Ah, but the thing that has tormented you, you already know who it is. You already know what it is. It is already left. He said, go ahead and do it quickly because the quicker that you do it, the faster I can go into the beatings, into the hitting, into the hurt to the pain and, and then they're going to nail me to a cross and, and they're going to commit me to the ground uh, and say that I'm dead and it's over for me. They're going to bury me in the ground um, in Joseph and Arimathea's new tomb. He said I'm prophesying and telling you what's already coming. He said but if I wait um, just one more day uh, the third day is coming um, and the third day represents um, a time of great revival. Uh, in two days um, the Lord holds Hosea, come on and tell us. Uh, two days the Lord shall raise me up. Two days we shall be revived. Uh, but on the third day, uh, the Lord is going to raise me up. Um, what it looked like was a joke. Um, what it looked like my life was in turmoil. Uh, when it looked like I had nothing and nobody. Uh, and nobody could carry me. Um, God is now uh, getting ready to take the last uh, and make them first. Uh, are you ready? He's about to take you from the back of the train to the front of the engine. Y'all not talking back now. I'm telling you, get ready now. What time is it? Get ready for what God is about to do. Get ready for him to do something. I know it's inconceivable to believe that God would do and be what he said he would. But I came to tell you, it had to happen, baby. It had to be just like it was. No, it don't feel good, but you knew it was coming. Come on, somebody. You knew it was coming. You knew who had the ticket. You knew who had the lottery to take you out, but it won't work. You're going to go. You're going to yield. You're going to consent until your death. You're going to consent to your crucifixion. You're going to consent to the pain. You're going to consent and say it is so. I concede to the Lord that this battle is not mine. Good God.
God. But it is the Lord. And no matter what happens from this point on, Lord, I give you praise. I give you honor. I lift you high. I praise your name and give you the glory for what it is that you said that you would do and the way you would do it. So I thank you for it. And I glorify you for it. Come on here. Let's give him some praise. Let's give him some praise. My God, it's departed. It's departed. Now I got to go the rest of the way on my own, but I'm going to make it. I'm coming through here. I'm going to survive it. I'm going to thrive. I'm going to be great. I'm going on. I'm moving in. Good God Almighty. I thank you. Lord, I thank you, Lord. I thank you. I got to go, y'all. I got to go, y'all. When they said you was washed up, they were right. Everything that you've ever heard, it was right. Or he washed up. She's washed up. They ain't never going to be nothing. It was never the people from the outside that said it. It was the ones inside that said it. Good God Almighty. But they were right because they didn't understand your words were prophetic. You're right. And what God was doing was washing you up. Come on, Esther. Get washed up. Because you get ready to see the king. Come on, put your myrrh on, baby. Put your frankincense on. Come on, kid. Get washed up and get ready. You're going to see the king. Wait. Let me give you some Bible. Joseph, this is the last day. That you're going to be in this place. The Pharaoh called his name and said, who is it that can interpret dreams? Said, it's a guy over there named Joseph. Where is he? He's in the prison. Go get him. He got in the prison, shaved his face, got washed up, changed his clothes, came out interpreting. And you know the rest of the story. He's the one that shifted. Good God. The whole nation. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all not saying nothing? Hey, my God, have mercy. I gotta go. Woo! Those of you that can make me meet, meet me tonight, there's a resurgence of me. There's a resurgence of me. There's a resurgence. The death has come. But there's a resurgence. If you can die, you can raise the dead. If you can die, you can lead the death, the dead out of the grave. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. There's a resurgence. There's a resurgence. There's a resurgence. I gotta stop, y'all. Let me shut it down. It was all in the plan. It was all in the plan. Hey, listen, I love you. I thank God for you. Young ladies, put the, the uh, on the feed, those that want to be a blessing, bless the man of God today. Because this is a real prophet. When you say a real apostle, I'm the real deal. Come on, somebody. Come on. It's time to stop feeding these, these old false prophets, liars, deceivers, telling you stuff that still ain't come to pass, that has frustrated your life. I'm telling you, stand on the word of God. We can stand on the word. I got to get out of here. We can stand on the word of God because his word, it never fails. Quicken thou me according to your word. Lord, help me here. I'm going to pick it up next week. I'm going to pick it up next week. Those that can meet me in Florence, get in Florence at 4 o'clock this afternoon. I thank you. I thank you. you if you're going to come, you got to be burdened. It's because you know this is the turn. This is the shift. Good God Almighty. Put a seed in the ground today. Put a seed in the ground. Put a seed in the ground. And bless a true man of God. 
and see won't God bless you. It's time for the shift. I love you. If nobody else ever told you that they love you, I love you. Kevin Lissine, I love you, son. I love you. Thank God. I think I saw Tim McDonald and some of the rest. I thank you. Some of my old members, I thank God for them that are still members. I thank God for everything that God ever did because there's a resurgence. Good God, I'm ready. Of the power of God. Thank you, Lord. Judas, you didn't do anything but what you were planned to do. Thank you, Jesus. You did it because we planned it that way in eternity. And I say to every one of you, go through, come on and let's go through this week. Let's go through, Mark Stallworth, I love you. Let's go through, let's go through and watch the Lord. Watch the Lord, watch the Lord fulfill his word. Love you and be blessed. Be a blessing today. I challenge you, be a blessing to a true man of God and see won't God bless you. You. you give a prophet a cold glass of water in the name of a prophet and you'll receive the prophet's reward. And I release unto you, whether you have it to give or not, a prophet's reward, the prophet's consciousness that you become cognizant of the purpose of God. That is the purpose of God upon your life. I love you.